Dusty Bills. I was wondering if you have looked into the Stanford prison experiment, and if so, what do you think about it? Hey, thanks, Dusty. We've actually studied the Stanford prison experiment as part of our curriculum on the university study that I'm doing. And I think we'll probably be looking at it some more, too. But we kind of got a little into it. And I watched some video of, from the actual experiment, listened to, um, oh, God, Zimbardo, right? The guy who actually ran the thing, uh, watched an interview with him. He talked about, you know, when they were conducting the experiment, how his own girlfriend was the one who had to insist to him that they stop it because he was, you know, kind of so caught up in the interesting fascination of this train wreck that was going on. And if you don't know the Stanford Prison Experiment, I, I, I'm not going to break the whole thing down here for you. It's just it was a psychological experiment in the 60s that went way out of control and ended up being shut down, I think, after six days. It was planned to run for two weeks. Um, summary, uh, okay, I will explain it. The summary idea is that there were uh, a group of college students in the basement, I think at Yale, and half of, or no, so Stanford, and half of them were made prisoners, half of them were made guards, and by assigning that personality, that, that identification, that job, so to speak, or, or role, maybe more exactly, better word, um, to each of those, to, the, to these two groups of people, they then started immediately looking at the world through that lens, right? The prisoners were locked up. The guards were told, you're the guards. They need to follow what you're saying, et cetera. And, um, and you know, shenanigans ensued. Uh, there was, you know, there was some abusive behavior. There were things getting kind of off the rails. There were people, uh, there was one guy in particular who appeared to be having a mild psychotic episode of some kind. I mean, it was it was pretty bad. Uh, things got pretty. The emotions ran pretty damn high on that thing, and uh, and so they ended up shutting it down. And and such an experiment would never, ever get ethical. Okay, now no one in any university in the world, I don't think, would uh, would authorize okay in such an experiment at this point. Um. So you know, what do I think about it? I think it was informative. I am not, you know, there is controversy connected with it. There is this idea that Zimbardo or uh, his assistant had briefed one of the guards in detail about how to act. It wasn't a fully organic process. I, th I think that's a little bit of a coin toss. I think that if you, if you look into the details of that, it's, you know, Zimbardo says, no, that's not what we did at all. And uh, I tend to believe him. But I do see how, you know, that conversation could have been, um, you know, could have could have messed with us or manipulated the, the, the outcome a little bit. But given the entire picture of what happened and the reactions of everybody involved, I don't think one conversation with one guard was that uh, that much of a of a of a bias creating situation that it that it throws, you know, all the results of the experiment out the window you know, this is why people have been studying it for decades is because it's an incredibly informative as to how people act under certain situations given stress, but more importantly, given a role and then taking that role on, taking it seriously and then acting accordingly. Um, you know, there's a there's this um, self-identification theory and, or self-categorization theory, I should say. And this has a lot to do with that. And it just so happens that I'm a uh, Pretty firm believer in, in self-categorization theory, and I think that Stanford Prison Experiment is offers us a look at, you know, an extreme situation where some of the, you know, more obvious and, and interesting and extreme examples of how that theory works played out. And I and that's that's pretty interesting stuff, because if you if it's true and if that is one of the big factors to why people behave the way they do is because of how they see themselves, what role they see themselves in in a given situation, what is and isn't appropriate, how, you know, and then they adjust their not only their behavior, but literally how they see the world according to those roles. That's 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 pretty heady stuff. That's that's some that's some pretty important stuff there, and um, and I think that Stanford Prison Experiment, you know, uh, gives some gives some credibility to that whole concept. Um, the cult milieu and what we talk about with cults also does. There's a lot to self categorization theory. It's it's pretty interesting stuff. So um, anyway, so that's kind of what I was my thoughts on the on the subject. Um, 
you have anything more specific about it you want me to know, you want to know from me, then uh, just let me know.